30 Bay Area researchers working on a way to attack breast cancer with fewer drawbacks than the typical treatment. When most patients get that horrible diagnosis, they want to know how quickly they can get the disease out of their bodies. But a new approach at UCSF could change everything. Our Elizabeth Cook spoke to doctors and a patient about how it could save women from debilitating treatments. Ten years ago, Judy Lee, then a 45-year-old busy mom of two young children, got the call that stopped her in her tracks. She had breast cancer. Do I need surgery? Am I going to lose my breasts? Um, will I be okay? Will I be here to see my kids graduate from school, from elementary? Judy's cancer is known as DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ, a non-invasive form of breast cancer that develops in the milk ducts of the breast. It's often called early stage or stage zero breast cancer. According to the National Breast Cancer Foundation, 20 to 25 percent of breast cancers are considered DCIS. Even though it's highly curable, the traditional standard of treatment can be intense. And about 90 percent at the time um, of women had mastectomy or, or hysterectomy. So they had treatment, they had surgery. And so those were the statistics I was looking at, and they were you know, pretty scary. Judy was open to a new approach. She found Dr. Laura Esserman at UCSF, a pioneer in breast cancer research. She had been doing active surveillance to avoid surgery on DCIS patients for over 15 years. It is no picnic to get a mastectomy. It's certainly no picnic to have a bilateral mastectomy. And if you don't really need it, you know, we, we, that's the way we always used to do it. And if, if you don't know any better, but what if you don't need it? Dr. Esterman, along with UCSF radiologist Dr. Heather Greenwood, launched the recast trial in February of 2024. The study they call watchful waiting instead of traditional treatment. DCS by itself is not life-threatening. It's a window of opportunity to figure out how to prevent you getting invasive cancer. And everyone has the opportunity to find out how they respond. And at six months, they can make a decision about what they want to do based on what their response to therapy is. We can find it so early that it doesn't yet have the capability to go to other places in the body. And what part of this trial is, is figuring out how do we best treat that? Do we prevent it with hormone therapy? And which ones do we need to take out surgically? Every six months, Judy is screened for any change in her cancer with a specific MRI scan, tests, and medication. There were moments when she wondered if she made the right decision not to go under the knife. I remember thinking that, um, gosh, this is not for the faint of heart <laughs> every six months. And I can now appreciate um, the current standard, if you will, of just basically getting it cut out because that's 100% at that moment, that certainty. 10 years after her diagnosis, Judy has avoided any major surgery. She is still closely watched by Dr. Esterman and her team twice a year. Clinical trials are tomorrow's treatments today. Not everything is, that you think is gonna work will work, that's why you have to test it. But everything that we do that's good and better has been done because we've done it as a trial and tried something new. One in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime, and it's the second leading cause of cancer deaths. Dr. Esserman and her team at UCSF hope studying this disease at the earliest stages will lead to better outcomes for women with all stages of breast cancer. The future of breast cancer treatment may mean less is more. And the recast study is expected to run through 2033. There are more than a dozen recast clinical trial locations all across the country. To learn more, just head to our website at kpix.com. Click on the story, the links to the clinical trial. That will be at the bottom of the page.